What is going on, friends, family, and neighbors? If you don't identify as one of those, give it time, because I'm inviting you to Mr. Rodney's neighborhood. Um, just leaving breakfast with a dear, dear friend of mine. And uh, it made me start thinking about our circles and the people we have in our lives. And um, wanted to, I notice I say and uh, a lot. I'm gonna work on that. But we have these circles in our lives and there's a lot of teaching out there or a lot of ideas about who's in our life, who gets to be in, their, in our life, how do they get to be in our life? How long do they get to be in our life? Um, when do we release them from our lives? And I wanna talk about the premise of the title of this vlog I currently do, which I hope it grows to be something a little bit more than that. I just need to start putting more work into it. But there's, the title is Mr. Rodney's Neighborhood because of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I love Mr. Rogers. I love the book. There's a book that re I read about him that really changed my life and changed my perspective of him it's called The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers. But you know what Mr. Rogers wanted to do on TV was he wanted to reach children, one. He wanted to reach them where they're at. And he called it Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood because he felt that there was just a great amount of people in his circle, in his life, that he wanted other people to also be blessed by those same people in his life and then he, of course he created the characters he had the king and the queen and he had the trolley and all of that going on but they represented either people he knew or parts of people he knew and then he had all kinds of different guests on there and he never had guests on where he was debating with them he always had guests on where he was celebrating people and their diversity. There was Officer Clemens, which that was history making. I'm reading a book about Officer Clemens right now. You know, Mr. Rogers had put his feet in the same swimming pool with Officer Clemens in a time where black people and white people just didn't do life like that together. And he was really incredible and just wanted to embrace everybody in. Reading that and then also I heard a quote years ago, I don't know who said it, but it's an amazing quote. And it said, when people draw a circle to keep me out, I draw a bigger circle to bring them back in. And I just love that because I think it speaks to the heart of Jesus. But there is some teaching out there. There is some very gifted people who teach out there about relationships and a lot of times you can get likes, you can get amens, you can get shout outs, you can get confirmations by when you start talking about sometimes you just need to cut people out of your life. And I think it's interesting that Jesus did not cut Judas out of his life. Jesus knew he had 12 guys in his tight circle and he one of them was a devil and he knew, he knew what Judas was going to do and he didn't cut him out. Now, there could be the argument where well, he had to keep Judas around so the rest of the process would work and he could uh, be, betray Jesus. But I love the tattoo I saw one time that said, Judas ate too. One of the things I think we have to do better on, better as as Christians is not being so willing to push people out of our lives, not being so willing to just discount or cut off relationships because somebody offended us, or we don't think somebody's going the same direction with us, somebody's vision doesn't line up with ours, or maybe even worse, somebody did talk bad about you, somebody did mis misrepresent you, somebody shared your business and they probably shouldn't have. Now, I'm not saying that we should allow people to constantly have the power to take advantage of us. Or I'm not saying that we should give people the knife and say, go ahead and cut me. That's not what I'm saying either. But I just think it's too easy to cut people off in our lives these days and to not want to be in the same room with them, not want to work things out with them, 
not want to take what I think is the Jesus route with people. Jesus said, you need to love your enemies. You need to pray for them that despitefully use you. If we're supposed to do that with our enemies, how much more will people who were our friends? Shouldn't we also with them, uh, bless them, pray for them, see how we can amend a relationship? What is, what is wrong with being the first to initiate a conversation of forgiveness? Maybe you didn't do anything wrong. Maybe that's legit. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been abused. Maybe you've been taken advantage of. But I do find sometime in the church, people, they do this thing where like, the Lord told me to forgive you. So I'm going to forgive you because you hurt me. I didn't know I hurt you. I'm sorry. Or, but it's like this self-righteous thing. But really, I think it behooves us to go make peace with people. Jesus said, you know, if you and your brother have an issue with each other, you leave your gift at the altar and you go find your brother and you make peace with them. You make things right. And sometimes that's a process. Sometimes the relationship, maybe there was some damage there. Maybe it won't be like it always was. But one of my favorite stories in the Bible when it comes to how we should deal with people, even when they don't pull their weight or even when they don't do what they're supposed to do is after uh, David comes back, he comes back to Ziklag and um, all of all of his their wives have been taken and the stuff had been taken and David had to encourage himself. They were going to kill David. David encourages himself in the Lord. And then he gets this group of guys together and he's like, we are going to go and get our stuff back and we're going to go and get our families back. And on the way there, some of those men just decided they couldn't make the journey. They're like, we can't do this. I'm not going to do this. And they stayed behind and it ticked off maybe rightfully so, ticked off the people who were going to go and get their stuff back. They really, really, really were like, well, if you don't go with us, you don't get any of the stuff. But you know what David did? David got the stuff, got, got the families back, and he still blessed those who did not go on the mission with him. Yeah, there's people in your life who don't see the things the way you do. Those people in your life are not going the same direction. And guess what? We don't have to just say, well, fine, then. If you weren't with me in the end. You weren't ever with me. And therefore, you don't get anything that comes from my overflow. That's not Christ-like. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then how many of us after Christ have sinned? And the Bible says if we willfully sin, we re-crucify Christ. How many of us have said yes to Jesus and then had to repent after saying yes to Jesus? Think about this. Think about agape, uncompromising, generous love that thinks about the well-being of others first. Mr. Rodney's neighborhood is meant to be a big circle. And I'm challenging you to expand your circle. And if somebody's closed you out of your circle, just draw a bigger one and bring them back in. All right. I love you. Thank you for watching today. Have an amazing day.